Hello there, and welcome to yet another video looking at the the mentally insane world of flat earth belief. Now, in this video, what I'm really going to be doing is really just kind of reiterating some things I've said in other videos and just reinforcing some points. There's a few things I really just want to hammer home and reinforce about why this so-called model of the earth just does not work. So again, we've got the flat earth here. Supposedly it's the, the wall of ice around the outside, Antarctica. The Arctic's in the middle. Now I've drawn on the equator and I've drawn on the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Now you already run into problems even doing that because the the length of the Tropic of Capricorn is shorter than the length of the equator. So, I mean, it just messes up there already. But anyway, let's move on. There are so many things you could say that are wrong with this. You just have to kind of push on and ignore some of them. So, let's think about the solstice in June. So the Sun, according to the Flat Earth model, is moving around this circle here. And if you're at a point here, then you would expect to see it in the north, see it rising in a northerly direction and setting in a northerly direction. Well, this it, it kind of works for the the north for this part of the the year, and it's uh, it's quite it's quite actually quite a close match the flat Earth model. I don't I wouldn't imagine it's perfect if you looked into it in detail, but. It's not a total disaster. Now, if you look up here, I mean, what's happening is on a sphere, so the Earth's rotating like this. This is the equator, and the Sun's kind of hitting the Earth in this direction, so that half of the Earth is in darkness. And this is why you get the 24-hour sunlight at the North Pole in the Arctic at this time of year. So the sun's directly overhead here, which is the, the Tropic of Cancer. So they're a, they're a fairly close match for there. Then the sun, according to this model, goes into a bigger circle and it's September, it's directly over the equator. Now this is where it starts to go rather wrong. So if this again is the, the Earth rotating on its axis, this is the equator. Now I have touched on this in another video. I've made a video about this. So the sun's coming from this direction now. It's, it's lighting lighting up half of this part of the world. This part's in darkness. And like I said in the video, this explains why the sun rises east, sets west, and you get 12 hours of daylight everywhere on Earth. And you just wouldn't get that here. Now let's have a closer look at this, because the sun is apparently moving in a circle here. Now if you're here on the equator and you get 12 hours of sunlight, then the sun should be visible from here to here for half that circle. But that would mean the sun was coming from a northeasterly direction. I mean, it's suppo supposed to be coming from this direction. You're supposed to see it in that direction everywhere on Earth on, a, on an equinox, which is what you do. But on a flat Earth, you would expect to see it coming from this direction. Pass overhead and then go, start moving in a northerly direction and setting in the northeast. So you should expect to see it coming from the northwest go directly overhead and then go northeast, but you don't. It comes from the east, due east, goes over, passes directly overhead and goes that way. The, the, the way that the sun changes the direction that it rises and sets from the solstice to the equinox is really only explained by the Earth being a sphere. Because this is what you're getting here. 
The sun's coming heading the earth in this direction, the earth's spinning like this. Then the, the direction that the, earth, the sun is hitting the earth goes to here relative to the spin of the earth. And that's why you get the, the sun rising in the east everywhere on earth and you get the 12 hours sunlight. It just doesn't work on this model. You would expect something totally different on this model. So that's September. Then you get to December and the sun is directly over the tropical Capricorn. Now, when you're on the tropical Capricorn, the sun rises roughly from this direction and it sets roughly in that direction. And you also get uh, about 13 hours of daylight. So you should see it for just a little more than half the circle. So you should start seeing it when it's about here and stop seeing it when it's about there. Now, how is it if you're here and the sun is directly overhead and then about just about six and a half hours later you see it coming from this direction but it's actually over here. How is that possible on a flat earth? Again, if you look at it from the perspective of the earth being a sphere, so this is the equator, now the sun's coming in from this angle, so this part of the world is in darkness and this half is lit up. And that explains perfectly why you would see the sun coming from the south and going away in the south and passing directly overhead on the Tropic of Capricorn. I mean, Okay, this, I can't emphasise this point enough. At any point on the Tropic of Capricorn on the December solstice, the sun comes from the south and goes to the south everywhere on this line. How is that possible? How is it possible if you're here that the sun would come from the south, go south, and then end up here? I mean... I know I keep saying it, but I don't, it's just ridiculous. And also the fact that it's the same at every point on this line. And yet, if you consider it from the perspective of the Earth being a sphere, it makes perfect sense. Also, the fact that the equator gets 12 hours of daylight every day of the year makes perfect sense. Because when the sun's here, you're still getting 12 hours of daylight on the equator. When it's here, you're still getting 12 hours. And when it's here, you're still getting 12 hours. Why would you get 12 hours of daylight every day on the equator here? This is another point about the equator that I really can't emphasise enough as well. I mean, I've had flat earthers actually say to me, the equator isn't a real thing, it's only something made up on the sphere. Well, if the Earth was flat, you wouldn't expect the equator to have any kind of special geometric significance. But it has a massive geometric significance on the Earth because of this thing that the way that the sun is rising and setting change, changes from going from the north to the south. And you get it right on the, on the equinox, you get it from the east going to the west. A, a symmetry that is explained perfectly by these three situations here on the sphere and not explained in any way whatsoever by this. You would not expect the equator to have any significance on this model. It would have no geometric significance. You would expect it to have a geometric significance, significance sorry, on this model, and it does, that has all this symmetry associated with it, that it can only be understood in terms of the Earth being a sphere. Be honest, people, this does not work. It just doesn't work. Now, further to this, you've got another problem, which is the visibility range of the sun. Now, it doesn't matter what time of year it is. The sun is always directly overhead somewhere on Earth and is visible across the Earth within about a 6,200-mile direction. 
So it forms a kind of a circle of visibility around that point where it's directly overhead, whether it's here, here, or here. So if the sun's directly over the overhead on the um, equinox, then according to this, you should get a sort of circle of visibility. So it's not very well drawn, but you'd get a circle of visibility. But there's also the fact that at any one time, half the Earth is illuminated by the Sun. Half the, the Earth can see the Sun. So on a flat Earth, the Sun would have to have a visibility range of a semicircle on the equinox. Now it can't be both. It can't both be a circle and a semicircle like this. Now the idea of the Sun lighting up half the Earth is just ridiculous because it would mean that his visibility range was much bigger here than it is here. Why would that be? I mean, it couldn't have a constant visibility range in any direction if it's lighting up half a circle. If it does have a constant visibility range in any direction, then it can't be lighting up half the Earth at once. It can only be lighting up this circle. So it just doesn't make sense. It makes sense on this model here. Everything is explained perfectly by this Nothing is explained by this. Now, I've put this information to flat earth proponents and the things that they say in response are just un astounding. I mean, they will just say anything at all and then act as if they've proven you wrong. I mean, the inarticulate, inane ramblings that they come up with and the way they'll just change the story halfway through and say, well, no, 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 it's not like that. I mean, no. And the amount of times I'm told that I'm using a straw man argument, well, this is your model. This is the one you came up with, not me. You're the people pushing this model. This isn't a straw man argument. This is your model. I mean, they'll say but just the most bizarre things like, oh, no, like the, the sun um, and the angle of something and the perspective and it kind of, and well, it kind of, it doesn't move in an exact circle and, and it, it's at a different angle here and there and you can see it and it's something to do with perspective and, um, well, well, the moon landings were faked in 9-11. I mean, you know, you take all that into consideration. I mean, if the moon landings were faked and 9-11 was faked, I mean, th this, the Earth must be flat, even if it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, this is the logic that you get from these people. I mean, you're talking about the Earth being a sphere or being flat, and suddenly they're talking about the moon landings being faked. It's got nothing to do with it. It's all kind of tied up in their, in their imagination. There's one kind of insane, paranoid fantasy. Okay. Now these are these are facts about the world, the direction the sun rises and sets. You you can check them. You don't have to go to Antarctica. You don't have to go to outer space. And if you're a flat earther watching this, if you can make a video explaining how it is that the sun can rise in the east and set in the west, everywhere on Earth on an equinox, how it is that the sun on the Tropic of Capricorn in December can rise from a southerly direction, set in a southerly direction, every point on the Tropic of Capricorn, then I must say you're, a, you're way smarter than I am. I can't see how it's possible. I mean, I've looked long and hard at this. I cannot see how that's geometrically possible. And it makes perfect sense from here, like I keep saying. This makes sense. This is a joke. That's really... That's really all you need to know. This is enough to destroy any notion that the Earth is flat. There's a load of other stuff, but this alone just shows you what a disaster this model is, what a joke it is. Okay, so if you're watching this, you explain to me how the, all these facts can be explained by this model, because I can't see it. I've tried to understand it, and I can't see it. So you tell me how it's possible.